snow for little space rocks. But whilst hunting for daytime activities to engage my students with astronomy, I heard that I could find micrometeorites right here in Birmingham. And apparently the best place to find them is on a roof. As meteors tear through the Earth's atmosphere, tiny particles break off, raining down from the sky onto mountains, forests, and even urban rooftops. Tons of this cosmic dust sprinkle the Earth every day, meaning these tiny micrometeorites are more common than you might think. So I'm hoping to find some micrometeorites in all this dust I'm sweeping up, but it would take me ages to find them manually. Fortunately, micrometeorites, like their meteor parents, have a really high iron and nickel content, so I can find them with the help of my magnet. So much dust! There must be some micrometeorites in here. Wow, there's a chunk of magnetic stuff there! Not all of this is going to be micrometeorites, but what I'm going to do now that I've found the magnetic stuff is give it a bit of a wash and see what's in there. Micrometeorites, also known as cosmic spherules or even stardust, aren't a recent discovery. But the fact that anyone can find them anywhere is a new idea pioneered by Norwegian geologists Jon Larsen and Jan Braley Kiel. Okay, I've been at this for a while now, and I think I might have actually found one, um, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to get in touch with the guys who pioneered this method and see what they say about it. Okay, so thank you guys so much for, for dialing in and helping out. Um, so I've been trying to search for micrometeorites all day. It turns out it's not as easy as I thought. Um, so how did you guys first figure that you could search for micrometeorites in an urban environment? 13 years ago, in the summer of 2009, I was having breakfast outdoors um, uh, on the white table on my veranda, and I suddenly noticed that there was something strange because there was a shiny dot so I picked it up on my finger and I thought, wow, this is a rock. It triggered my curiosity <laughs> big time. And from then on, it was no return. And you guys haven't just been like finding them, but you've come up with a really cool special technique for photographing them. And, and I've seen some like otherworldly pictures you've taken. So how did you design that photographing technique? So this is, this is uh, the setup. Oh, wow. Uh, 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 as it is, so it's, it's, the footprint is very, very small. It's extremely compact. Each of the images that you have seen on the net consists of between 200 and 1,000 single images. Wow. In some cases, up to 1,200, 1,300 images. At this very high magnification, the focus depth is extremely shallow. And what we are doing is we are staging the, the space rocks like any portrait photographer would do with putting light uh, and play with light and shadow um, in order to make the best results. Wow, so what are the main categories then? What are the main groups that they kind of fall into? Uh, depending upon the entry angle, etc., that creates the, the entire um, variety of uh, types from the unmelted ones until the completely melted ones. And in between there are, let's say, a handful of main types, like uh, they, when they start to crystallize, it's uh, cursed uh, um, olivine crystals, and they get smaller and smaller, and up to um, very fine grained uh, uh, crystal lumens. All the, these micrometeorites, they are not two are alike. You recently met um, the person who went all the way to Antarctica to find these micrometeorites. And then, so how did the story go? At that time, the consensus uh, in academia was that the cosmic dust particles, of course, you cannot find them. Yeah. So, uh, Michel Moret, he thought, well, at the, in the cold desert at the South Pole, it's below zero all the time. If a particle lands there, it 
might be frozen. So it might be an archive of frozen um, micrometeorites within the blue ice of Antarctica. And he went there and then he found them. <laughs> Last month, <laughs> I visited the, the, the old master, his and we paid a tribute to him, thanked him for <laughs> their work. And just for fun, I took some uh, magnetic samples outside his house. And <laughs> in that test, there was one micrometeorite. No, really? Yeah, yes, yes. Oh wow! So the guy who went to the <laughs> to the end of the world f to find the micrometeorites, he actually had it just outside his own house. That is really, really fascinating, and I absolutely love that story. So this is what I found today on the roof of the University of Birmingham. So what do you think? Am I on to something? Okay, so sorry, sorry, so it should be okay, and the color is okay, but the the black material on the top is something that we do not regularly observe so but but i think that the lack if that's if you have been on the roof and found only one uh, it tells me that you have uh, looked in uh, not the right places in the right way because any roof anywhere even in remote places will be so filled with spherules okay brilliant so i didn't find one this time but now i am equipped with better information and i'm motivated to go out there and try again well no, thank no. you again so much for your time both of you it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you thank you likewise if you want to get involved in that meteoritic daytime activity or the project stardust citizen science program then head on over to our website where we've put a guide on how to get started now with his favorite daytime observations is Pete, a man who's finally got a good night's sleep. <laughs>